So we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for your interest today. Um, <clears throat> again, those reminders on uh, how to uh, how to donate and make uh, make this information possible. Today's agenda: we're going to cover uh, safer grocery shopping. Today, Kroger has started limiting its number of customers coming into the store. Costco and Walmart have started recently, and it makes you uh, wonder about uh, most of the, well, at least half the people watching this channel are baby boomers. And uh, some of you may have heard a, about a thing called Victory Gardens back from World War II. We'll talk about those briefly. Uh, I'm going to cover some of the upcoming topics because I'm excited and, and very interested in what we'll be covering. And then, of course, we'll have the uh, Q&A. Regarding upcoming topics, here's one that's going to be a big, uh, a big issue, a slam dunk for the CDC theorists in the bunch, uh, the CDC conspiracy theorists. There's an article by the New York Times called, Where Have All the Heart Attacks Gone? There's been a 40% decrease in heart attacks since the uh, COVID outbreak. We're going to talk about telemedicine. Uh, you may remember, probably don't, because I could hardly even find some of those old videos as well. I'm working with a company called K Health. They provide, provide uh, telemedicine throughout the country. They're located in New York, and they are going crazy right now in terms of growth. Um, telemedicine is becoming a very big deal in New York. You may remember it because I really didn't talk so much about the telemedicine side. I talked about AI. What's AI? Artificial intelligence. It's a company that truly is using artificial intelligence to improve doctors' diagnostic capabilities. And in those uh, old videos, I gave you a lot of the science behind that. But I'm just going to give you an update on what's going on with those guys. Uh, us guys, I'm still working with them, helping them with their uh, their uh, credentialing programs. We'll also talk about teledentistry. <clears throat> Many of you have seen Doug Thompson. He's a dentist that started the Wellness Dentistry Network. He and I, um, on Thursday, we'll be covering the telemedicine programs. We'll talk about K-Health. We'll talk about Doug, Tom Doug Thompson's teledentistry. I've gotten Doug uh, set up with a few of my patients for uh, teledentistry consultation. You'd say, how can that work? And again, dentists have been some of the last guys to understand the value of telehealth care um, for understandable reasons. They are very procedure oriented. But I've been after Doug and guess what? The, um, the coronavirus pandemic has helped uh, motivate him to, to get going. And so he's ready. We'll talk a little bit about his program. You may remember we started a program. It's not been, uh, I don't think a lot of people know about it, either that or maybe just not interested. But we'll talk about that too and give you an update. There was a Lancet article I, I read and did some of the uh, slides for on, um, gosh, two or three days ago. We just haven't had time to get to it yet. It's the one that's talking about 37 days of shedding the virus. So again, helps you understand why this is such a uh, infectious, contagious disease. And then there's, a, there's been a lot of work on updates on the ACE2 receptors, the uh, ACE inhibitors, and the ARBs. So again, we'll be covering those later this week. Thursday's telemedicine. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have, uh, where have all the heart attacks gone? And Janice will be joining me for that discussion as well. And then later we'll start covering the Lancet article the, and the uh, more information and updates on ACEs and ARBs. Um, but let's get started with uh, safer grocery shopping right after uh, Carl gives us the intro. Pandemic continues to grow. It's still on that hockey stick, that uh, growth component of the curve. Um, U.S. is still 
is clearly the uh, epicenter now, and New York's the epicenter for the U.S., along with uh, Detroit and a couple of other uh, growing areas. I don't think a whole lot of people are unaware of that. So let's talk about Kroger and uh, grocery shopping and limiting customers. Um, I've got another uh, special guest today. <laughs> um, Janice just popped in. And I keep asking her to come in and join us because it's so much easier for you as the uh, the viewer to follow a conversation rather than to hear one person just pitching, especially when it's me. I, well, anyhow. Um, so let's talk a little bit about groceries. So today, Kroger started limiting the number of people that come in. Like Walmart and some of the others, I believe what they're doing is they start the count in the morning, and then when they get over the count for that store, it's a one by one. You can go in when somebody else leaves. Uh, for Kroger, it's one customer for 120 square feet, and for Walmart, it's one customer for 200 square feet. Now, what does that mean in terms of stores? Well, for a small uh, downtown store, that could be about 375 people in the store at the same time. Mm -hmm. And for the, we live about half a mile from a, um, what Kroger calls the marketplace stores. It's a big store with a lot of uh, other types of inventory in it, 125,000 square feet. So that's going to be about a hundred, I mean, excuse me, about a thousand shoppers at a time. Your typical store is going to be 500 to 625 shoppers. Now, why do I have a picture of King Super? Am I um, confused here? It's an affiliate of Kroger. Exactly. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, Kroger has struggled to obtain gloves, masks, and, uh, and other personal protective equipment, according to their uh, union president, Kev Kevin Garvey. Um, but they're doing more and more to uh, protect the health of their customers as well as their employees. That's a big deal for me because I was once a Kroger employee and my son is now a Kroger employee. Uh, again, temp uh, some of the other things they're doing, temperature checks, both um, uh, mandatory temperature checks on employees when they come in as well as uh, voluntary. They're even talking about one-way aisles to decrease that um, uh, bumping around and turbulence. That sounds weird, but again, having worked in a in a grocery store environment, I can tell you, grocery store strategy 101 is to sort of confuse the customer. It, it, have you ever noticed that you once you start learning where things are, it seems like they move it? They do it on purpose mm -hmm. because they want you to mill around, look at what other people are purchasing, etc. Well, at least they did until the age of COVID. And now they're saying, hmm, maybe we need to slow down on some of that. So they're setting it up like a parking lot with arrows running one way. There's some, yes, there's and some. And you go to the next aisle and it's running the opposite way. Yeah. To decrease that crowded flow. Right. The turbulence in the flow. Yeah. Which used to be the opposite of what they wanted to do in order to maximize. Right. Um, Sales. Buyer frenzy. <laughs> yep. They're also uh, temporarily waiving a lot of prescription delivery fees uh, for e for mail and uh, career. Although I did see we're, we're doing our first pickup on Wednesday. And you and me. Yes, at Kroger, um, where we have ordered online. It used to be called ClickList, but they've expanded it to be called Pickup so that it's involved in other stores that did not have the ClickList where an employee shops for you and brings it out to the curb and you've, you've selected your items online and then you pick it up, you paid with a credit card online. So there's no exchange of credit card, which I like, and then you pick it up. But it did say specifically that um, pharmacy could not be picked up in that manner. And I'm hoping, hope I do hope that they go to that route where you do not have to do the drive through pharmacy, which, I think we mentioned in an earlier video, I asked if I could read my card. Uh, to, oh, yeah. To, yeah so explain that because I, I don't think most people are going to remember that. Oh, okay. Well, a couple of weeks ago when I had um, some medications to pick up, I 
I really have not gone into the pharmacy since the flu season began in January. I decided I was more protected doing the drive through to begin with. But this time I went um, wearing a glove to pick up the package through the delivery. And I used an ungloved, I was going to use an ungloved, no, I'm sorry, I'm confusing. That's how I shopped. I used an ungloved hand for the credit card when I checked out. But I did not want to use the credit card and hand it over. I saw the person at the pharmacy touching her face. I saw the line of cars behind me, which were like six in in depth in the lineup. Um, so I just asked her if I could read my credit card to her so I would not have to exchange. What'd she say? She said, I've never done that before. But now, I, what did that mean to you? Yeah, and I thought, gosh, can you imagine all these cards being passed to the same person all day long. Some of these, some of these their people are, face. or they're sick. You know, they may, could be sick. They may be in asymptomatic COVID patients. I don't know, but she, she took her, took her a couple of times. She got a manager involved and then she did it. Now I think the biggest benefit is when you can pick up your groceries and pay for your pharmacy and it's thrown into the bags with it. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, it, so you and I started this isolation a week or two before other folks got the message, probably a week or two after we would have had we been keeping up with world events and not focused on the Orlando event. <laughs> Our uh, own conference. But one of the things, so we've done very little, we, we've shopped what for groceries once since then you did a little bit of uh, Tai Chi in more and more separate environments. Outside outdoor, with outdoor only three people. And now you've stopped that. Right. So for us, the major risk has been that grocery right. store. And so we've limited it significantly. We haven't bought any um, delivery food or takeout food no. or any of that. Um, but every time, so we go walking around and we, every day when we walk, that grocery store parking lot is full. It is. So it's like, to me, it's, one of the major failures of uh, infection control in our in this pandemic shutdown environment right now. So it's really exciting to me to start seeing these grocery stores start to think about this, start well, to get a clue. And it's exciting to me that they are protecting their own first responders. Now, why is that? <laughs> well, we already stated her son works in the grocery. But, you know, like any other person that's providing a service that is essential, those folks need to be protected. Right. They're coming exactly in contact right. with many people a day who, you know, we don't know the, due to lack of testing, we don't know the percent of asymptomatics. And, and I'll tell you, uh, I know you don't like to share a lot of stuff or some, some things you don't like to share, but I, I think I can say this. There were times when we've been uh, tempted to advise Jeffrey to say, you know, hmm, maybe I ought to get work elsewhere just because he's right in the middle of of that space. But he loves his job and, you know, he's a young man making his own decisions. He loves his job and he is a man making his own decisions. So some other countermeasures that um, that Kroger's starting to do in, in some places, plexiglass partitions and in-store radio uh, safety and health messages like, you know, how how can you help protect yourself and others? They've also reserved special shopping times for senior customers uh, and folks that are more vulnerable to the infection. They've cut, cut operating hours. And as we said a few minutes ago, King Super's in there, Fred Meyer's in there because Kroger's not just the Kroger name. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Kroger stores or King Super stores, or Fred Myers, maybe we start to get a picture. When I, I, I used to be the, um, the medical director for the little clinic, chief medical officer. And as I started going around to these stores throughout the country, I began to see that they had a different name on them. But once you, and sometimes the, the outer uh, entrance looked a little bit different, but the themes were continuing to get more and more consistent to the basic Kroger footprint or, or Kroger uh, theme. Then once you got inside the store, it looked very much like a Kroger footprint. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very interesting. Except for um, these marketplaces. 
which you mentioned we have one, which also had a Fred Meyers jewelry store. Now, not to confuse, because Fred Meyer is a standalone store out in the West that's a full grocery store. Right. But the marketplaces had Fred Meyer's jewelry, which have now all shut down. Yep. That was a big deal for us when, when we worked there and I got a discount. So, yes, I was the uh, chief medical officer for the little clinic in the Kroger, uh, the Kroger st stores. And our son now works in the meat, meat market at uh, one of the uh, Louisville stores. Now, these changes are not coming in a vacuum. Kroger uh, is not the first one coming out with this. As I've mentioned, Walmart's uh, done it. Costco's, I think, yeah, Costco's started to do it. And governors have started to request and push for this, setting limits on number of customers in retail stores at any time. Um, well, on Saturday, Walmart began limiting customers in a store. And again, their rule was, um, 200 square feet. Now just think about it. How big is that 120 square feet or 200 square feet in terms of that six foot distance? What is it? Pi D, uh, what a thousand divided by three points. I don't know. Maybe I, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have even gone there. I thought I understood it or had a clue about it beforehand, but Maybe not. Well, it's a 10 by 10 room, 10 foot by 10 foot. No, a hundred by Di 10 foot. Diameter square uh, circle. Oh yeah. A hundred square feet. By 10. Feet. Right, 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 right. You can think of it that way. Anyhow, I'm sure there's some smart mathematicians that can probably help us and maybe they'll, somebody will uh, help us as we get closer to the Q and A section. So a typical super center is much bigger uh, for a uh, Walmart. So, They've got a little bit more space uh, potential there. The by far the biggest ones that biggest footprint at Kroger is 125,000 square feet with the um, the marketplace. Uh, Kroger, I mean, a, a Walmart super is 200,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So they can manage a thousand shoppers at a time, even with a uh, that larger diameter. I'm guessing that 100 feet by 10 feet, 10 feet would be maybe be the size of an aisle. Maybe a whole aisle is 200 feet. So maybe that would be two people per aisle. I'm just guessing. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I, I think you could have more than two people per aisle because the aisles are going to be more than 10, more than two, 20 feet long. No, I said 200. Well, if it's 20, it's, if it's 200 feet long, then it's 10 by 10, which okay. means 20. Well, you can tell we really need yeah. help on that. So you ever hear of uh, Victory Gardens? Yes. Are you that old? No. You're okay. just a historian, right? Exactly. Well, tell us about Victory Gardens. Well, you have the article pulled up, but what they're seeing back in World War II, people grew their own gardens so that other supplies could go to the allies. Um, and there's a quote, I don't remember it to you out of the article of how that name came about. Oh, no, I don't. But anyways, um, seeds, burpee seeds is seeing 75% more um, hits on their content right mm. now than last year. Very interesting. And people, one, they're at home, two, they're worried about fresh produce. Going to the store. Three, they're not sure they want to get fresh produce from the store. Right. So they are beginning to do backyard gardening. And I will add a apartment gardening. Mm. So it's not just for people with yards. We have a daughter that lives on the 14th floor of an apartment in Santiago, Chile, oh, who does her point. own gardening. You don't mean a gardening in your apartment yard. You mean gardening inside the building. Inside exactly. The That's what I said. It's not just for people with yards. You know, you can grow herbs and other things in an apartment. So, um, and it's something if you have children at home who are no longer in the educational system physically, mm -hmm. they are via Zoom. It's something that parents are doing with their children as well. 
pardon the digression on the, on Zoom. It just reminds me of the conversation we had yesterday. And I was I couldn't believe how clueless I was. I was wondering what was going on with all these students. It's Zoom school now. Right. Very interesting. Well, I used to be a big gardener, but I never ever made edibles, vegetables. I just always did. I didn't like the idea of having to hoe weeds or pull weeds. And I didn't like the idea of going through all that work and then there's nothing there next year. So I always <laughs> did perennials. Okay, so maybe there's uh, uh, some good things that come out of uh, the COVID outbreak. Well, actually, that's going to be one of our topics either later this week or early next week. Um, maybe there was something good about uh, the grocery stores decreasing their uh, their number of customers. So, and, and you see the sign. Be aware, my, my husband and I went to Kroger. I mean, went to Costco wearing masks. We got home, took the mask off, and it was not my husband. So, again, that uh, basically covers the topic for today. I'm going to go back out in to the um, to the video and see. So let's remove that. Do we not have a oh wait a minute. Here we go. To the chat. Yeah, to the chat. You're going to stay for a few minutes for the chat? I will, yes. Okay, good. So Dave Murphy, good morning, Doc. Can, uh, James Cantor, good morning. Art Trans, good morning. Marcio Alexander, teleproctology. Actually, uh, Marcio, somebody gave me a hard time about um, uh, one of the, uh, he's actually saying, look, now's a great time to get uh, screening for um, colon cancer. And there's a lot of truth to that. Um, I think our group had re removed a couple of his previous comments because they were all about uh, one of the uh, one of the forms, one of the brands of um, of colon cancer screening, and it was so much it looked like an ad. Mm. Uh, so I think he got removed for that reason. But it is a good point. Uh, now is a good time. Any time's a good time. Uh, colon cancer screening is major neglected. Half of the cancer, colon cancer deaths are uh, should have been avoided, at least half. John D, uh, they do get close here. Okay, let's start see if we can get these up on the on the thing. Joseph Page, won't customers get close together while line, lining up, waiting to get into the store? You have. Well, you, that's a very good point. They also get um, could get into problems lining up at the cash register, right? You were mentioning that's that the what, other yeah, day. Yeah, that's what I think he's talking about. Oh, to get into the Waiting store. Waiting to get into the store. If you I start know, looking at the pictures, there's, there's a crowd there. Yeah, and I know they've blocked. A lot of people come in the exit, and they've blocked that from happening. Mm. So, but, um, yes, even lining up to check out. I know some stores have six-foot demarcations. So, John D, they get close because of disrespect and or ignorance. Uh, Laura Rance, doesn't matter. They don't have any food to choose from where I live. People are hoarding. Thanks for all your great videos. Lots of love from Texas. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Jerry West. Uh, Jerry, you never told me if you were that Jerry West. Uh, last weekend, <laughs> few marker, a uh, few market customers were wearing face masks. Fewer still employees, including the checkout staff. Can I, I think, comment on that? Sure. One of in the initial phase of COVID, we, um, the public was told not to buy masks. They should be left for healthcare workers. Right. It's only since Friday that the CDC has recommended wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And um, they were not available to grocery employees either until um, this article came out last night about Kroger in particular. Right. Having yeah. masks for their workers. So there's been a change. We still want the N95s and um, surgical masks going to the people that need it, either the first responders in the grocery, ambulance, fire department, and of course, healthcare workers, which is why the CDC outlines cloth masks. So, uh, Art Trans, I'm doing my first pickup today at 2 p.m. at Kroger. Good luck with it, Art. 
and uh, let us know how you wipe all that stuff down when you bring it in. We're going to be getting what a bunch of groceries tomorrow. Tomorrow night at eight. So yeah. today is grocery eve. That's what you called it. He's very <laughs> excited. But I do want to say I have a addict. friend that did the pickup and the employee started walking right up to her car and she told them to stay six feet away who wanted to talk about substitutions. So yeah. be careful. Yeah, be careful, even with pickup. TSA checking driver's license is even worse. Yeah, wanting to get that driver's license. Very interesting. John Tocho, we've had senior hours and a limit of people admitted in any one time. Uh, Tammy, good morning. Uh, Nancy DeBozak, the last time I went shopping here in the Tampa area, I was happy to see very few people in Costco. I still didn't like having uh, to be out, but it looks like people are starting to take it seriously. Yeah, you know, you want to comment about people starting to step away as we're walking? Well, I was also going to say, I think the hoarding phase of grocery shopping has declined. For According sure. to Jeffrey, it really has. Yeah. So even though we see, see cars at Kroger, ours is a huge Kroger marketplace. Yeah. Um, but the flow has slowed anyways. So I'll answer that question now. Uh, 10 times 100 is 1,000 square feet. That's what I said. And that's why I gave that idea of an aisle if it was 10 feet across how many people could fit in an aisle would depend on how long it is if it was 200 feet long then two people that's my <laughs> you don't agree with that math i don't understand that math i okay. used to i, I used to just, pretty good you just said 10 feet by 100. yeah but why 100. to get to a thousand to get to a thousand but we're talking about a 10 10 foot diameter right square feet okay I'm probably, I, yeah, I'm probably wrong on that. Anyways, Greg without I diabetes. The Fred Meyer in my town was the busiest store in the chain. And I think the floor space is on the small side. So I haven't been in the store, but they have a very good pickup and delivery system. I would definitely choose that. Fennel. I had a good conversation with Fennel yesterday. Uh, you may remember Fennel uh, had the comment about uh, his wife uh, is pregnant. And that was one of the big questions, one of the big discussions about mm. uh, diabetes of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Now, again, it hasn't hit um, pregnant women or uh, infants in utero or uh, neonates. What has not hit? Coronavirus. It has. It, it has, but it's not been like, it hasn't been, the, well, go ahead. Why don't you talk about it? Well, there was a father that, most hospitals up to a certain point were allowing the fathers in the delivery room. Right. And there was a case where the father was in the delivery room that later tested positive for COVID and um, his wife got it. Um, so did she die? I don't know. I've read so many statistics about that, but there's been newborns with COVID as well. There have been, there's, there's no, these folks are not immune to coronavirus. That's not the point. The point is, uh, unlike some of the previous, not all of them, but some of the previous uh, seasonal flus, a lot of the pr previous seasonal flus were very hard. Uh, pregnant women got very serious disease with it. So we're all getting infected. Yeah. The question is, are you getting very are you serious at high disease? Risk? Are you at high risk? Right, and and this is not that much. Uh, the serious disease component is not that much for this specific one. It has been for many others. Uh, Fennell was talking about how this thing of not allowing the father in is a big, big deal. It's a very big deal. And uh, most I understand wives that. want the father. In. They want support. They don't want to be in isolation. I'm not sure you wanted me there. You did. You called me biscuit breath. You remember well, that? Well, you kept eating <laughs> all through the, <laughs> the delivery. <laughs> anyway, again, I guess I dig digress. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> Jim Hyde, we're having our groceries delivered to our house. We order and pay online. They drop them on our porch. We wipe them down before we bring them in the house. Excellent. Can I make another point about that? I had a discussion with a patient yesterday about that. And my recommendation is even though the delivery system is a wonderful option, I would still not get three different 
stores delivering, mm. three, you know, every week, because then, you know, I would just get one delivery over an extended period over of time, a month. over an extended period of time. It's a false sense of security yeah. to think that delivery means you can have something delivered every other day. I saw an article about is our deliver delivery or takeout food safe? Have you seen that article yet? No. I just saw the headline. I haven't read it. But you and I both, we haven't focused on it because we both feel very strongly that it's not. No, and I love to eat out. Oh, yeah, that's the truth. But I have not eaten out since the start when we went to shelter in place in March on March 9th. Okay, here we're going to get some real math. If looking for a rough estimate <laughs> <laughs> of a circle with seven feet all around from the center, center point, 14 by 14 equals 196 square feet, giving approximately seven feet from center. Okay, all so you're around. doing a perimeter. So that's what I was, yeah. yeah. That's a little bit closer to what I was thinking about. 200 square feet thank as opposed you, to. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. We needed, obviously, we needed some help there, didn't we? How long can coronavirus live in the refrigerator? Great work for you, too. It's a pleasure to listen to you as well as your message. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Jim. And I don't know how long it lasts in the refrigerator. Do you? No. no. I, I will say this: it's clear that it's a sort of it's a wimpy virus in terms of things like um, uh, hydrochloric acid and some very minimal uh, sterilization techniques. However, it's not like some of the other viruses, like HIV, for example, which does not survive very well outside the human body. Dave Murphy. Good to, good to hear from you, Dave. When I go to Sam's or Walmart, I use the Scan and Go app. Scan items, scan items, check out, and pay all from my phone. No checkout line there. You know, I saw that about two months ago, and I thought I saw people using it, and I thought that's very interesting. But you know how old people like me, you're a little bit don't like change. I picked one up anyhow just to see what it was like. I never could get the thing to work. I don't think you ever used it, have you? No, we have a different device at this Kroger Marketplace. My only... Um, we do have Scan and Go. Yeah, we have Scan and Go. It was not with the iPhone. They have a device that you pick up. Right. It's a device yeah, you pick yeah. up. All it's a scanner. Oh, he's talking about using it with his iPhone? Uh, that's he pays from his iPhone. Oh, he so pays he picks from, up the uh, Scan and Go item, okay. scans all the items, and then pays from his iPhone. Well, then again, how many people have picked up that scanner? I don't know. Then you're interchanging the scanner... It's still better than yeah. going through. I wear a, gloves for sure. Going through a line, and you put it on back on the belt, and then the uh, checkout person's putting his or her hand on it's it every time, and then and, out. The, it's a and then the baggers putting their hands on it. And again, bottom line is both of those assume that shoppers are not putting their hands all over. I know. So, but it's still better. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Rob T07, good morning. Have you seen Dr. Cameron's Kyle Sedell's YouTube saying that COVID remembers altitude rem resembles altitude sickness more than ARDS, therefore the high pressure ventilator could be doing harm? Well, uh, I haven't seen that, but I had clearly heard that the high pressure ventilator protocols were doing harm. You want to do go with a lower pressure and a lower uh, lower tidal volume. I want to answer this question. This is funny. Okay. Janice, why did you call him biscuit breath? I thought he was low carb. <laughs> <laughs> this was 1992. I was not low carb in 1992. He I was, was plant-based. Well, and you me, had your sweet addiction, too. <laughs> Let's put it this way. We lived in yep. New York, and he was eating out every day in the city <clears throat> with a salad plus a major dessert. That's what I used. That was my go-to meal. I yeah. did that a lot, but I, had to, I wanted to manage my weight, so I did that by having a salad and then a dessert. Yeah. And that biscuit. So we were in the labor and delivery room, and this, this cart came through the labor and delivery area. And they had these things, and it was, it was huge. It was like that. It smelled great, to me anyway. I was in labor 14 hours, so it was not eating. Well, it he was, ate this in front of me. It was a challenge. I remember <laughs> I was asleep at like two in the morning and I heard this scraping. I don't know if you can hear that, uh, but it was, it sounded really weird. I finally woke up and I figured out it was Janice in the kitchen making jello because she had heard that she could eat jello. I was in labor and I wanted to eat some jello before I left. 
And I took it with me. Anyway. Okay, uh, I'm going to step out and let you finish. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, Alessio777, I've noticed that there are more people at the store during the one hour of senior time than later in the afternoon. Now, that's interesting. One hour of serving 25% of the population versus 11 hours serving the other 75 if that's the case, then you really do have to ask the question about uh, validity on protection from COVID. Uh, Karen Reinerson, what do you think about forced vaccinations they want us to take? Oh, my goodness. So I will tell you, I know that there are a lot of vaccine haters. Uh, I know there's some countries that are, uh, I think it was recently Denmark started developing something people were calling a martial law around vaccines and the uh the statement that they could make people take vaccines karen i'm a i'm a public health guy um and you go back and you look at the history of public health and yes there is no intervention there's there's no human endeavor that's not perfect i mean there's no human endeavor that is perfect Therefore, there's no intervention, medication, vaccine, anything that is totally harm harmless. But go back and look at the world before smallpox vaccine, the world before measles vaccine, the world before um, uh, the childhood diseases vaccines. I mean, these. These were devastating diseases, and um, so the bottom line is: no, I'm not a I'm not a vaccine hater. Um, that's still a little bit. That sort of just touches on the surface. There's there's a lot more to this. Um, I will say this: I do. You know, you keep hearing how it's going to be at least a year, year and a half, maybe two years before there's a a vaccine available for a coronavirus. As damaging as this coronavirus has been and is likely to continue to be, I think we're going to start doing a little bit more weighing of the risks of, of going a little bit sooner in the vaccine access, you know, rather than doing a year and a half of market testing versus the dangers of continuing the coronavirus disease. I suspect the vaccines are going to become uh, more available, more voluntary basis, more signing off on risks associated with it. And yes, there's, I'm very much aware that there's uh, some governments who are looking at, at different ways of forcing people to take it because um, as infectious as, as as infectious as coronavirus is, it's herd immunity is not going to be significant until we get way high levels of resistance antibodies, as in like 50% or more. You know, there's a lot of uh, just everybody has opinions about everything, and uh, a lot of folks have very negative opinions about uh, Bill Gates, but there was a um, and I don't think he's perfect either, but he, he made that comment in one of the recent talks about uh, this pandemic coronavirus. And I think he's right. It's not going to be uh, a 10 percent uh, immunity to coronavirus is adaptive immunity is not going to make a significant impact. Laura Ranch, Janice. Oh, why did you call me biscuit breath? Um, Art right, Trans, I'm cleaning the perishable food in, cleaning it out first, leaving the rest in the gar garage for three days before bringing them. That's very similar to what we're doing too, Art. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, Laura Rance, love, love, laugh, uh, LOL, love you all. Dave Murphy, no, everything is done on my phone. Oh, the phone scans the camera. Whoa, that is very interesting. I've got to check that out. But you know what? I don't really know how much we're going to be shopping in store these days. Richard Scarcy, I think you're making this store capacity spacing thing a lot more complicated than it is. I think you're right. I think we did. If a store has a capacity of 100,000 square feet and they're targeting 200 square 
feet per customer. Yeah, well, we did cover that. Uh, Kroger, for example, small stores, 375 on average, up to the uh, 125,000 square foot um, uh, uh, marketplace, a thousand people at 120 square feet apiece, and the the uh, Walmart Supercenter about uh, 200,000 square feet, 200 square feet per person, again about a thousand people. So Laura Rance, bye Janice. I hope he doesn't eat a biscuit while you're gone. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, it, it, you may remember, some of you may have seen old Alabama Gardener, OAG. He's like uh, almost 80, 78, and he's uh, in Alabama. He's got his own ch uh, channel. And I got interested, he got interested in our channel. He He's one of those people that said, look, I took your tests. And by the way, I wasn't insulin resistance or pre-diabetic. I was full-blown diabetic. I think you guys saved my life. I mean, he's one of those guys that did that. He came up to visit and be a, and be a patient and shared a lot of his experiences. My point though is he's got a great channel. Despite being in his late seventies, he's very, very good with technology. And some of it, I think, appears to be, thank you. Some of it appears to be due to the fact that he was in the rocket industry uh, as a career. Um, Anyhow, I got I got interested watching his channels, and I don't think I'd had I had had a biscuit since 24 years ago when Jessica was born, but uh, I had not had a biscuit in like five or six years. And then I started watching him, and it became ah, I think I'm going to try making biscuits again. But uh, keto biscuits, and uh, here Janice just brought this up. We've got cheese bread muffin uh, mix, and this is all keto, uh, for example. And I'm making, uh, I do, I've got a bunch of uh, coconut uh, flour, and I'm making uh, keto biscuits with those. Duke Jason, hydroxy C and Z pack, and zinc seems to be a new treatment protocol. There's no question about that. There's also uh, a lot of buzz about it. I've, as you may know, I've got medical licenses in about 40 states now, so I keep getting pummeled with these uh, recommendations. One of the states came out, sent me something yesterday, sent it out to all the docs licensed in their state, and they were saying uh, they are now uh, hydroxychloroquine and zinc, I mean hydroxychloroquine and, and uh, uh, zinc and the um, azithromycin, have become so popular that they are now outlawing it for preventive purposes, which is interesting. Another update on the uh, Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine uh, item is that um, most people don't know or think about the fact that uh, hydroxychloroquine drops your blood pressure. It's actually approved in India as a diabetes drug. So be careful taking it with other things that may drop your blood glucose like metformin. Derek and Sarah Nave, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. That means, I wonder where you're located. Um, <clears throat> narrow path, hydroxychloroquine or z -pack will beat this 90% of the time or greater. I I suspect you might be a little bit optimistic. I do think that they're clearly going to work. Uh, Hayden Neek, good morning, Doc. Chichi Wawa, I went to Trader Joe's last week but missed the senior time slot and was able to go right in. Well, very good. I really appreciate the interest today. And um, again, uh, be aware. Uh, Tune in. We're going to talk, talk a little bit later this week about the um, different um, telemedicine programs that are available. Janice's, a couple of her docs, her endocrinologist, endocrinologist, docs that have never, ever, ever used telemedicine are starting to do it. And if there's any generation that needs better access to healthcare, it's the boomer generation. Also, the generation that just continued to struggle wrapping its head around telemedicine. 
Well, I think this, uh, this pandemic is going to change some of that. By the way, one of the topics we're going to cover over the next week or two is the good things that are likely to come out of this pandemic. Obviously, there's a whole lot of bad, but um, a whole lot of bad things like the economy. On the other hand, I think the I was talking with a couple of people uh, yesterday how um, Fennell, for example, is one of them mentioning how the economy is going to greatly increase its flexibility for uh, for work at home options. Um, the uh, uh, the baby boomer generation that is struggling to wrap its head around remote medicine, telemedicine, I think is going to start getting better access because of this. Okay, narrow path. Without a vaccine, you won't be able to work. Look up immunity certificates. Bill Gates already touting this on CNN and, and TED. This will be on a paper or plastic card. No, uh, narrow path. Uh, you may know I'm, I'm involved in a few other things. One of the things that I'm involved in was the, uh, the consulting group that uh, we have. We actually um, are in negotiations with a, uh, a company with about a quarter of a million employees. And this is where that's going to go. They've already gotten, it's a, a financial industry group, and they've already gotten folks working at home. Now the question is how to get them back into work. And that's, that return to work is very likely to have some uh, major focus around, I've tested positive for the antibody and uh, later on may end up having uh, a vaccine component as well. Hi, Nick, is this acting like the flu where it could be transmitted by breathing? Yes, it is transmitted by breathing, by talking, by breathing, by uh, not just sneezing and coughing which a lot of folks uh, felt. Rob T07, I re read in read yesterday that India is stopping export of hydroxychloroquine and its ingredients. Yep, you know, that's just another area where we've, the U.S. has caught it in terms of masks, caught it, caught it in the shorts uh, in terms of masks, uh, test kits, PPE, other pe personal protective equipment, gowns, and pharma, you know, India is a major focus in the world globally, a major concentration for um, uh, generic medications. And I think we're going to go back from a security perspective. You know, there's huge political debates around, around that whole thing, but I think there's going to be a significant, you're already seeing it. Uh, PPE is becoming a cottage industry. One of the uh, the groups that we're working with is a uh, is a generic pharma manufacturer, and um, again, major losses to them if they have to shut down due to a potential uh, coronavirus infection. And um, yes, they've got they've got places in India, they've got places in New Jersey, and what we're going to start seeing is significant increases in these critical industries in terms of. Uh, being prepared for next time. Again, one of those actually good things is going to come out of um, this epidemic or pandemic. Lori D., what do you think? Dark skinned people are getting COVID 19 at a higher rate. Heard that on NPR today. Could that be because they make less vitamin D? The vitamin D issue is a, is a big issue. Um, I haven't heard that. Um, NPR, just like all of these outlets, has its own political leanings, but I haven't heard that about dark-skinned uh, folks. I will tell you, um, the with the sample that I have, I haven't really seen that much of a significant difference in dark-skinned people with vitamin D. Uh, you hear that, you see that in the science somewhat, but uh, you also don't see... I clearly don't see that much of a correlation between husbands who are spending, retired husbands who, who were spending a couple hours a day playing golf and wives who were not. A lot of this stuff, these concepts about vitamin D are really maybe more myth than reality, at least practical reality these days. Um, but vitamin D I think is very important. I, uh, I supplement with it and I recommend that uh, others do as well. 
follow it. Uh, you don't want uh, 25 to 40 uh, levels. You want 60 to 80 or even 90 levels. Once you get over 100, you need to back off because vitamin D can be lethal. It can be harmful. Um, nobody ever has had a significant problem with uh, supplementing with at least with a 5,000 international units daily supplement. Neuropath, is it an implant under the skin? Why can't US and Canada make hydroxychloroquine? We can, we just gotta gear back up. Would liposomal zinc have the same effect as hydro hydroxychloroquine? I you know, I know there's a major focus on liposomal delivery systems for things, especially for vitamin C. Um, I haven't heard of liposomal zinc. I think that's interesting. Don't know the answer to that. Very interesting question. Reggie Salad, two years for a vaccine. What if we, what we need now is a viable therapeutic drug or cocktail of drugs to reduce mortality. Um, but there's no question about need. Here's the problem. Uh, you may think that we've done a great job in terms of medications, antiviral medications, but I don't. Uh, I mean, there's been significant improvement in antivirals for HIV-related disease. The antivirals that we give for the flu, for example, just not that helpful. Now, would they be helpful in terms of preventing death? Uh, very well might be. And again, I don't think that, uh, I, I think that uh, Plaquenil and, and uh, azithromycin and, uh, and zinc are gonna be very helpful in this space. Okay, a couple more things, then I'm gonna head out. Uh, Dave Murphy, if you're immune, antibodies, vaccines, can't you still be infectious for a day or two if exposed until your antibodies kill the virus? Theoretically, you could, David, but here's the thing. Uh, we're really infectious when in that critical point. So Janice got me uh, a uh, so Janice got me a marker. Hopefully this will work for the shaky paper. So uh, again, bad, uh, bad. Uh, so here we go. So if you look at uh, this is the virus, you get infected. Those first few days, you're not really that infectious. It's after a few days when you're starting to build up what we call viremia, high levels of virus in the blood. That is when you're really infectious. Um, then you start developing the antibody right here. And in, as you, you see, pretty soon after developing the antibody, your virus load starts to decrease because that antibody is coming in and starting to kill the virus. So if we ha have a, a previous infection, and or a uh, previous vaccination, we're basically moving this curve over here. So as we do, yes, theoretically, so if we move the curve over here for the antibody, theoretically you could still uh, have a little bit of viremia, but again, you see what you're doing, you're just cutting down your infectiousness dramatically. So where it doesn't become that much of a significant issue on a population basis. Hope that was clear again. And I hope that there were a couple of the guys that like the old shaky paper in the past that uh, got a kick out of that. The immunity cer certificate that you, that you said you're working on, does this involve implant? Don't skip over me again. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I didn't understand what you meant by an implant because I'm not making any connections at all between doing an implant and an immunity certificate. I don't understand that. An implant of what? Don't understand, sorry. Okay, late but here, D. Crispin one. Good to see, good to see you're here. Good to see your interest. And thank you guys very much.
to, uh, to the rest of you for in, your interest as well. Carl, did you have a little uh, sign off? Talk to you later. <laughs>